Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I am so happy to meet you again on equal cardiographic finding in COVID-19 pneumonia case 5, subacute core pulmonal, which I believe is common in COVID-19 pneumonia. Let us see. A 42-year-old male patient known case of COVID-19 pneumonia was admitted to our ICU because of severe respiratory distress and connected to mechanical ventilator high setting. A pressure control 28 millimeter mercury, beep 12 millimeter mercury, FI2 70%, IE ratio 1 to 1.2, respiratory rate 26 per minute. He was fully sedated with fentanyl with azolam with RAS scale minus 4, hemodynamically stable heart rate 90 per minute, blood pressure 120 over 70 without erythropes. There was increase in all inflammatory marker, especially D dimer reaching 4,000 microgram per liter. Okay. A case of severe COVID pneumonia, severe ARDS, or high sitting with high inflammatory marker. Patient was started on our protocol for severe COVID-19 pneumonia, interferon beta 1B, 8 million units, three doses every other day. Uh, each dose, each dose every other day. Ribavirin, 400 milligram BID, Lubinavir, Ritunavir, 400, 100 uh, uh, BID. Azithromycin, uh, 500 once a daily, ciftriaxone, enoxibarine, steroid. And enoxibarine, therapeutic dose in this patient because of severe incre market increase in the D dimer. Critical care ultrasound started for this severe ARDS COVID 19 patient. First, as you all of you know now, inferior vena cava. Full non distensible inferior vena cava, go to heart. Subcostal view is amazing in COVID-19 pneumonia era because of high P, post pressure ventilation. I believe subcostal view will reinvent subcostal view in this COVID-19 patient. Okay, subcostal view. Wheel contracting left side, wheel contracting right side, dilated right side, more inside the left side, more inside the left side, and as you see here, the thickness of the free wall of the right ventricle is almost the same as the uh, thickness of the septum. So you get a feeling of dilated, sick right ventricle. Let us confirm that. You see tricuspid regurge with measurement of the thickness of the free wall of the uh, uh, right ventricle. You see it is more than one centimeter, sick, bulky, dilated right ventricle. Good contracting. We, we now measuring the pulmonary artery big systolic pressure from the tricuspid valve maximum velocity and the inferior vena cava. As you see here, the big pulmonary systolic pressure is more than 60, 71. So we have now a parameter going with subacute or chronic or acute on top of chronic core pulmonal, which are number one, the sick free wall of the right ventricle more than one centimeter which means that the ventricle has time to compensate for the pressure overload and uh, compensate by increased thickness number two the big arteria the pulmonary arterial big systolic pressure is above 60 which is 71 because he get time to compensate and increase the contractility and increase the tricuspid uh, regurg velocity so our patient has Subacute or chronic or acute on top of chronic corbalmonal, not acute corbalmonal. Okay, good. Let us talk about subacute corbalmonal. This term is very important because I believe most of the patient with right side dilatation in COVID-19 pneumonia has subacute corbalmonal. This term appears in the American Journal of Cardiology long time ago, 1962. And they diagnose subacute core pulmonal because there was in the patient, there was an absence of underlying cardiopulmonary disorder to account for the dyspnea. And the COVID-19 patient is acute, is acutely affected by the pneumonia, and the most of them has no underlying cardiopulmonary disease. And number two, there is abnormalities suggesting hypertrophy and dilatation of the right ventricle, 
and the clinical course of only a few weeks. So, this is the criteria really for the COVID-19 patient. COVID-19 patient basically has no cardiopulmonary problem in most of the cases, young patient we saw in the ICU, no uh, medical history, no cardiopulmonary uh, history explaining the core pulmonale. Number two, the course of weeks. Number three, the presence of more than acute, subacute or chronic core pulmonale by the dilated and sick right ventricle as we see, as we saw in this patient. But probably the most common cause of this uh, subacute core pulmonale is they are talk about the pulmonary, recurrent pulmonary embolization. It's very important, this subacute core pulmonale, very important term in COVID-19 patient, I believe. Very important term. Okay, we finish. Fear vena cava dilated, non distensible, right, heart subacute core pulmonale, dilated, sick right ventricle with increased pulmonary, uh, big uh, pulmonary systolic pressure. Third, we're going to the lung. As you all of you know now, I used to do lung water score uh, for the patient with COVID 19 pneumonia to follow uh, the response to treatment and uh, even uh, before weaning. As you see here, this is the right upper mid clavicular lung zone, score zero because of A line, and right lower mid clavicular here, A line score zero, and right upper mid axillary here, score two, confluent B line, like curtain, right lower mid axillary here, subpleural consolidation, and the confluent B lines, score two, and Right blabs, as you see here, there is consolidation, so it will take a score 3. As you see here, the right lung water score is 7 over 15, and considered high lung water score, most of the area are confluent B line and consolidation, that means high lung water score. Left lung, left upper mid clavicular A line score of 0, left lower mid clavicular A line score of 0, left upper mid axillary score of 2 because of confluent B line, left lower mid axillary two, confluent B line, and left blabs consolidation three. That means most of the area are confluent, confluent B line and the consolidation going with a moderate to severe ARDS. Okay, patient, our patient has moderately severe ARDS and high lung water score uh, 14 over 30. You see here this, Consolidation, this consolidation in COVID-19 patient is ominous sign. It's very, this consolidation COVID-19 patient is really a, a grave sign and the, denote severity of the COVID-19. You see here, there is wedge shape, wedge shape subpleural consolidation, wedge shape subpleural consolidation. Is it infection or infarction in COVID-19 pneumonia? Please, if you see this type of pleural-based wedge shape uh, sub subpleural consolidation, fire the color and decrease the scale to uh, 15 to 20 centimeters per second and see if there is any color inside and if there is any vessels outside. As you see here, there is vessel, dilated vessels outside, and as you see here, no color inside. That means this wedge lesion is going with infarction, not going with infection. And I did a lecture about that a uh, couple of days back. Uh, I will give you the link uh, to how to differentiate between infection and the infarction of the uh, pulmonary lesion subpleural consolidation. If it's pleural based subpleural consolidation with dilated vessel outside and no vessels inside, no color inside, it's going with pulmonary infarction. Force in this patient is very important. If you suspect subacute core pulmonale, you, you need to do compression test for uh, lower extremities vein to diagnose DVT. As you see here, you need to reach, this is the right side. This is the right common femoral vein, and this is the artery. You need to reach to this important area, which is the junction between great saphenous vein and the common femoral vein. And you will compress this area to be sure 
it is uh, clear of thrombus and totally compressible and you will go to five centimeters below this junction to be sure that the area of the femoral vein is free of the thrombus as you see here now we did uh, compress compression test it's compressible here and we go down five centimeter to be sure this is the proper segment which is commonly you will see thrombus inside and by uh, com by full compressibility of the uh, femoral vein in these sites you can exclude uh, the thrombus in the common femoral vein by 95 percent <clears throat> this is the uh, left side as you see here there is hypoechoic area and the, with the border hyperechoic inside the vein and when i fire the color there is color all around but inside there is a thrombus when I get longitudinal view, there is a thrombus here, and there is a thrombus here of the left common femoral vein. Okay, very clear thrombus. If you see this thrombus, please don't compress because the thrombus may detach and cause uh, bad pulmonary embolism. Patient was already on therapeutic anticoagulant. And as regards the treatment of the mobile thrombus, free-floating thrombus in the uh, extremity vein, already our patient has full dose anticoagulant for this uh, DVT. And as regards further management of this free-floating thrombus in the deep vein of the, of the uh, extremities, uh, I, I get here the European Society of Cardiology guidelines for diagnosis and the management of acute pulmonary embolism developed in collaboration with the European Respiratory Society. They mentioned very clearly potential indication for inferior vena cava filter include venous thromboembolism and absolute contraindication to anticoagulant treatment. Recurrent pulmonary embolism despite adequate anticoagulation and the primary prophylaxis in patients with high risk of venous thromboembolism. Other potential indications for filter placement, including free floating thrombi, have not been confirmed in patients without contraindication to therapeutic anticoagulants. So it's not confirmed as an indication of the inferior vena cava filter of this free floating thrombus in the deep veins. One hour later, unfortunately, patients suddenly developed bradyarrhythmia. arrest, the CBR started, and the adrenaline was given. As you see here, this is the, the color. Uh, subcostal view the color dilated right side compressing left side this is after adrenaline as you see here markedly dilated right side now compressing the left side now it's acute on, on top of subacute corporal monal now as you see here dilated right side because of most probably this logic thrombus as you see here subcostal view before arrest and here to compare with arrest markedly dilated right side compressing the left side fortunately tba was used in time zero but unfortunately at the end this patient uh, didn't survive unfortunately uh, take home message in this case in some covid 19 pneumonia patient it's not only pulmonary microthrombi but your patient may have a real hypercoagulable state with real big thrombus. So please search for this in the pathway from the deep extremity vein until right ventricle. And you will see in the coming cases how this thrombus may be very tricky and come in most of the places, really. Two, acute or subacute corporal monal in COVID-19 pneumonia may be due to Severe ARDS with hypoxia and hypercarbia induced pulmonary vasoconstriction exacerbated by right ventricular pressure overload of positive mechanical breath and the high beep and don't forget recurrent pulmonary emboli in this patient. And thank you a lot for your uh, appreciated listening. See you in the coming echocardiographic finding in COVID-19 pneumonia, inshallah.